Hey everyone, welcome to my my channel and welcome to today's video. Hope you're doing great. Um, today, by a very popular quest, I'm going to talk to you about how I find and reclaim yarn. So this is something I've been doing for a long time um, that I learned about from my mom. She's been doing it forever. It's a really affordable, like economical and also environmentally friendly way to um, to knit, to do yarn crafts. Um, so it's something that I find really satisfying. It helps me feel like I'm keeping things out of the landfill, um, and kind of contributing to the circular economy, I guess you could say, <laughs> if you wanted to get really technical, but, um, it's just a way to feel like I'm, I can, can do my craft without like having it harm the earth or anything like that. It's also very cheap and it's kind of fun. It's very like therapeutic to see something go from like, a knitted garment to the materials back to a knitted garment again. So um, I'm going to talk you through how I do that today. Uh, I'll talk you through some things you need to think about when you're shopping for items to un unravel. Um, and then I'm going to kind of show you how I do it, the process, and some tips and tricks. So without further ado, let's get on into it. Let's get started. So my first suggestion when you are um, deconstructing or reclaiming wool is to have a couple of tools nearby. So this is generally what I like to use. I like to have a sharp pair of scissors just to clip um, seams or ends to start getting things unraveling. I like to have a seam ripper. Um, sometimes I use it instead of the scissors. And then I like to have like a, a thicker darning needle or a, a thin knitting needle or something that has a little bit of a point on it that I can kind of get under stitches and start to like pull on them if I need to. And you'll see a little bit later um, what I mean by that. So those are the three tools I like to have nearby when I'm doing this. Um, the next thing to consider when you are actually shopping for sweaters to unravel, um, there's kind of three things that I look for when I'm shopping. So the first thing that I consider above anything else is fiber content. Um, I generally prefer to knit with natural fibers. I find it a more pleasant experience um, overall. So I generally look for sweaters to unravel that are made of natural fibers. Uh, and it's usually very easy to find out what clothes are made of because they have, they have it listed. So um, either in the tag by the sizing up here at the top, um, it, it will either be here on the front or back or if it's not there, then look on the left side of the garment is usually where it is, is this white tag. Um, and it will tell you what the fabric content is. So you can see in this one, so you can see here, this sweater is 90% cotton and 10% linen. So um, this blue one I have, um, same thing. It's listed up here at the top and it's 85% wool and 15% nylon. Um, and then this one is also listed up at the top um, by the size tag, on the size tag. Uh, and it's 100% wool. So that's the first thing I check when I'm looking for things to unravel. The next thing I look for is yarn weight because you don't want to unravel something that's so fine that it's going to be unpleasant to knit with unless you're willing to hold multiple strands of it together, at which point it can be a little bit tedious. And also the finer the yarn that the project is made or that the garment is made of, the harder it is to unravel because the, the strings will just break more easily. So I would never really go any smaller than like a heavy fingering weight, to be honest, because any lighter than that, it gets really hard to unravel and becomes tedious to knit with. So this, I would say, is probably a fingering weight gauge. Um, and the more that you do this, the more familiar you get, and the more that you knit, the more familiar you'll be with kind of yarn weights and gauge. But I can look at this and say, mm, that's probably a fingering weight yarn, fingering weight gauge. That fabric's pretty tight, the stitches are kind of small. Um, but this yarn is robust enough that I don't think it's going to fall apart while I'm trying to unravel it. Um, same thing on this guy. You can kind of see it's harder to see on this one because of the, the fiber, but the stitches are a little bit bigger. I would say this is probably a heavy fingering sport light DK kind of weight. Let me see if I can show you somewhere else. Yeah. 
So you can kind of see better here. The stitches are a little bigger, a little looser than that last sweater. I would say this is probably a DK weight. Um, and you can always carry a measuring tape with you if you want to measure the gauge over four centimeters or four, 10 centimeters, four inches to see how many stitches it is, kind of getting a uh, estimate of what it will be able to, you'll be able to knit it up as. Um, and then this one, again, this one is pretty, um, this is at, knit at a pretty loose gauge. It's a drapier fabric because it's a plant fiber. Um, so I would say this is probably also a DK, um, DK weight that I could use. So that's the second thing I'll look for. The only thing to think of is like, if you're looking for a DK weight yarn and all you can find is fingering, you can always hold two strands together to give you a DK. Or if you're looking for a worsted, but all you can find is DK, you can hold two strands of that together. There are always options. Um, the only thing you'll need to be cognizant of if you are gonna hold strands together is the size of the garment. I guess this is one of the ones things I was thinking of, but it's another thing to, to think about is the size of the garment. So this is like a women's size two sweater but it's a little bit oversized and it has a hood. Um, so this is gonna give me a good amount of yardage um, for uh, when I unravel this, I'm gonna get a good amount of, of yardage. And I generally assume that like, if this is a sweater that's oversized, I can probably get another sweater out of it for me. Um, same thing with this one. Let's zoom you out a little bit. This is a men's size extra large sweater. Um, it's huge. There's a ton of yarn here. I could probably get at least a sweater, if not a sweater and a half out of this for myself, a sweater, and then maybe like a contrast color for some color work or something, or because this has nylon in it, I could use leftovers for socks, things like that. So this is a ton of yardage. This would be more than enough for me to make a sweater for myself. Um, this guy, however, is a little bit smaller and I actually originally bought this to wear just as it was, but it doesn't fit me very well. It's a little bit small. Um, it's very fitted, it has negative ease. So if I'm to unravel this, I probably could not get a full sweater for myself out of just this. Um, I could use it for a color work sweater. If I wanted, like the body of a color work sweater, if I had a contrasting color, I wanted to pair with it. I could use it for accessories. I could use it to knit something in a smaller size for someone else, like a child size or something. But because this garment is small, I'm probably not gonna be able to have enough yardage to get something for me. So that's another thing to consider. Um, the last thing to consider is um, the color. So color is less important to me because it can be changed to some degree. Um, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I do, I kind of dabble in dyeing and a lot of times I, I like to over dye. If I've gotten a yarn that I'm not quite satisfied with the color, then I can over dye it or just kind of change the color a little bit. You have to be familiar with color theory to kind of try for the color that you want. And the thing with dyeing is that you're, it's never, it's not an exact science and it's hard to replicate colors. And it's especially hard to know what you're gonna get when you're over dyeing. And then I have this blue yarn. I'm not gonna be able to turn it white. I'm not gonna be able to turn it like yellow. I could turn it anything darker than this, a purple. I could probably make it, I, I think the, I could color it a darker blue. I could maybe get it to look a little bit more green, but I'm not gonna be able to turn this bright pink. So there is a limitation to how much color variance you can get. So generally as a rule of thumb, if I'm shopping for sweaters to unravel, I try to buy things in colors that I know I'll use, um, or like that are in my preferred color palette, um, with a little bit of wiggle room there. So those are the three big things that I look for when I'm shopping for sweaters. One more thing that's very, very important to consider is the seams of the sweater. So when you're, if you find something, you're like, that's a great yarn weight, that's a great color, that's a great fiber content, the next thing you have to look at is the seams of the garment. So most commercial garments, um, sweaters and things, are knit flat on knitting machines and then seamed together at the sides. But sometimes they're made out of just giant pieces of knit fabric the pieces are then cut out and then sewn together. You do not want to buy those because you're not gonna get the result that you want. So you need to look for seams that are sewn together like this. So you can see this seam, there's no machine, machine, sh machine sewing. It's stitched together with a mattress stitch or some kind of stitch. You can pull on the seam and kind of see how it's sewn together. Uh, same thing for this guy. It's sewn in, it's knit in panels and then sewn up. Um, and this guy as well, you can look on the sleeve 
and see that that's where it's sewn together and that'll be just fine to unravel. This sweater, however, is not gonna be fine to unravel. So if you look at the seams on something like this, you can see, let me zoom you in as close as I can here. You can kind of see here how it's surged with a machine, like a, a serger. Um, and that means that this sweater was knit one giant piece of knitted fabric and then the pieces were cut out and sewn together, which means if you started to unravel it, each row would be a separate string. So you would end up not with like a long skein of yarn, you would end up with a lot of small strings and it would not be practical to knit with. So if you see something that's surged like this, you don't want to buy it for unraveling purposes. It's perfectly fine if you want to just wear it as a garment, but not if you want to reclaim the yarn. So please be aware of that. I've been burned a couple of times by that where I've gotten something home, forgot to check the seams and realized I couldn't unravel it. So just be aware of that. Okay, so those are the things you need to consider when you're shopping for things to unravel. Those are the big important things. So once you get something home, I recommend that you wash it before you try to unravel it because um, when you're pulling something apart, the fibers are gonna kind of fly everywhere. Some of the fibers are gonna get released into the air and if there's dirt and hair and junk stuck in those fibers, it's gonna go into the air. You will probably breathe some of it in. It's gross. So wash it beforehand. If you can do this outside, it's even better. So then you're not breathing in fibers and they're just kind of flying off into the air. Um, but if you're like me and you're lazy or you live in a colder place, it's not always practical to do it outside. So at a minimum, wash things before you unravel them. If you really wanna be careful, you could wear a mask if you're doing it inside, but just be aware. Um, okay, so once you get it home and it's all clean and washed, then you're gonna to wanna to start pulling the panels of the piece apart. So like I said before, most garments are knit in panels and sewn together. So you, if it, like this is a cardigan, you're gonna end up with two front panels, one, the two arms, which are sewed at the bottom or seamed at the bottom. Um, and then you may have a collar or a button band or something to remove, but basically anywhere you see these big major seams is where you wanna start pulling the pieces apart and then you'll unravel each piece to get your workable yarn. So the best place to start is at the end. So I'm gonna start with the hood just because it's kind of an easy place to, to start. And you can see right here, there's some loose ends. This cardigan actually had a button band on it that I pulled off yesterday. but. Um, so you see the end here and you can kind of start pulling on it and strings are going to start coming apart. If you start pulling on it, you can kind of see where maybe the bind off was or just where there might be a little bit of loose something or other. Um, so this is when I would take my darning needle and just kind of yank on this and try and start unweaving it from where it's knit together. And you can always pull, if you pull on the fabric, it's pretty resilient. It'll start to kind of unravel itself. Now I'm seeing that that is unraveling this panel, not this seam. So that's not the right end to pull on. So ends like these that are kind of like braided, that's generally because it's the end of the seam. So you can snip those. And just to be aware, you're not gonna be able to save every last yard of the yarn in this garment. You're gonna lose some. Um, as you're going, but as you can see, that was the right thing to snip because now it's just gonna pull right apart. Um, and you can see this string is what was holding it together. So if you yank on this, it should just pull right apart. Um, it doesn't always come apart this easily. Sometimes you have to pick at the seams a little bit, but if you find the right side of um, the piece, then it should just pull right apart super easily. Um, and there it is. So one more thing to note before we get, keep going is that a lot of times commercially made garments are made of lace weight or finer yarn that's held together in a couple of strands. And it's generally not twisted together or like really plied because it's knit with machines. Um, just so you know, these different plies are what's making up the yarn. So it can be a little bit splitty and a little delicate to work with. Just things to be aware of when you're reclaiming yarn. It's not always the easiest or most glamorous. <laughs> okay. So I now have that hood detached and there's one more seam up the hood that I wanna try and find the end of. Let's see, maybe it's, I think it's right here. 
So I'm gonna, again, just pull at it a little bit. You can kind of see, oh, there's the string that's holding it together. Snip that, pull a little bit. Might take a second, but there we go. And then, whoop, just pulls right apart. It's so satisfying. <laughs> I'm gonna flip this, pull that through, and clip these apart. Okay, there we go. And then we have two panels. So I would say, I would recommend that you do that for all of the panels, separate all the panels, and then start to think about unwinding them. So. Um, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you how to unravel from that from just this little pocket that I pulled off of the same cardigan. So, um, first thing I recommend you doing is figuring out which one of these is the cast on edge and which one of these is the bind off edge because unraveling from the bind off edge is, is going to be much, much easier than unraveling from the cast off edge. Um, I did a little bit of this yesterday so I know, but that this bottom edge is where I want to start. So. You start pulling, you'll start to see just pulling on some of the threads and you may have to clip to get a thread going, but you can start to see it's already kind of unraveling a little bit. And this is what takes a good bit of patience is because if you don't want to just snip, um, it's going to take a little, a, a little while to kind of finagle those pieces apart. Um, and if you don't want to spend the time to weave it out, then I would just clip this first row off. Um, I'm just gonna clip it, snip it, whatever you wanna call it. Just snip that. And I'm gonna snip right along here. You can kinda see. Let me see. You can kinda see there's a ridge here. I'm just clipping between the two pearl ridges, basically, to get that started. And it does waste a little bit of the yarn, but it makes it go a lot faster and keeps me from growing crazy in this process, which can take a really long time to do a whole sweater. So just gonna snip that across. Okay, now it should unravel really, really quickly and easily. Um, Okay, there we go. Now you can see. <laughs> I just have to start pulling on it and all the little strings will come apart. So there we go. Now, well, why is it doing that to me? Okay. There we go. Now it'll start to go. Okay. Now it's just a matter of pulling on the string and unraveling it. And personally, I would recommend at this point using a ball winder, or if you wind by hand, that's fine. It's gonna take you a little bit longer, but wind the yarn as you go, or else it's gonna get tangled. And it, there's nothing worse than having to untangle <laughs> a giant ball of yarn. So either wind it around your fingers or use your yarn winder. Um, here's my ball winder that I have. So you could just do it like this. I'm gonna feed it through here and start winding. Sorry for the noise. And then if you use the winder, you can just hold this still and the winder will do all the work for you. So you just have to turn the handle of the winder and it will unwind it for you. It's very satisfying. You might get stuck. That's totally fine. Just fiddle with it a little bit. There's my little cake of yarn from that pocket. So you'll see that it's a little bit um, 
here you can see it better on the other end. The yarn's pretty noodly. It's just like any time you frog something, the yarn comes out a little noodly. Um, it's up to you whether or not you want to get the noodles out. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Depends on how lazy I'm feeling. But just know that your knitted fabric is gonna look a little bit wonky until you block it if you don't take the noodles out. The best way to take the noodles out, I don't know why I'm calling it that, but is just to wash the yarn. So, and generally I do this anyway because I like to kind of get an estimate of how much yardage I have in something that I unwind. So then I take my Swift <laughs> and I will measure just with a measuring tape around my Swift. I don't know if I can zoom out anymore. Um, this is such a weird angle. Uh, I will take my measuring tape and measure around my Swift to get me to like a meter and a half or 150 centimeters or a yard or whatever you prefer your measurement to be. And then I will wind my little cake around the Swift. You could do it from the knitted swatch to the Swift, but I just find it a little bit harder to do it that way. So I would just rather take the extra step. So I'll just wind it around my Swift. Um, and you can do that as many times as it takes to take the whole ball. And then if it's at a meter and a half, you can just count how many strings you have times that by 1.5 and that's approximately how much yardage you have. It's not an exact science, but it'll give you kind of an idea of how much yarn you have. And then once it's um, all swifted up, you can tie it in a couple of places to make big hanks and then you just wet the hanks, wash them like you would block anything else and then hang them to dry and it should get some of the kinks out. It may not get all of the kinks out, it might still be a little bit wavy, but it will be a little bit easier to work with and your fabric will look a little bit nicer. Okay, so that is how I go through the process of unraveling a sweater or jacket or cardigan or whatever to reuse it and make it into something new and give it new life. Um, I find it really satisfying, I enjoy it a lot and it allows me to be creative in new ways and afford this hobby that I love. Knitting can be quite an expensive hobby um, and quite a wasteful hobby. And so I feel like this helps me feel better about being able to do what I love um, in just a little friendlier way. So if you have any questions about anything that I covered in today's video, please let me know in the comments below. Um, if you've done this before and you have any tips that I missed, forgot about, didn't mention, leave those in the comments below. It does take a good amount of time. You have to be patient. Um, it's not like, it's not, it's not for the faint of heart, um, but it is worth it in my opinion and really satisfying. So if you have any questions about anything that I talked about, please let me know, I'm happy to answer them. I want to help other people to be able to do this, to find nice things. The only thing is that if you live in Seattle and shop at the Goodwills near me, you shouldn't watch this video because I don't want you to buy all of the things that I want to buy. But anyway, my yarn stash is so big right now that I should not really be worried about that. Um, but yeah, I just want this. This is something that helps make knitting a more accessible hobby to people. And it's just, it's just fun. And so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, again, let me know down below. If you liked the video, please comment, like, subscribe, share with your friends. And I will see you in a few weeks with my updates uh, on my knitting projects for February. So I will see you then.